evening, Lake Orion. Welcome to History Now here on ONTV. I am your host, Anthony Taramina. It's been a while. It's been since March of 2020 since I last did a show. And it was actually one of the last shows that ONTV had. Um, and it was in before we had to shut down due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, I've had a lot of viewers ask me what has what I've been doing, what's been going on throughout the rest of my 2020. Um, this, as I mentioned, this is actually my first show since March 2020. And, um, you know, I just wanted to, you know, catch up and uh, reflect and talk and, and let you guys know what I've been doing in this wacky 2020 and through most of 2021. Um, before I talk about what I've been doing, I just wanted to reflect on what has been happening in 2020. We have went through a, a crazy election, a murder that triggered race riots, and also we're living in a pandemic. So you had three things, three crazy things happen in one year. And that's been, it's been a very, a very crazy year. I guess that's what 2020 kind of started off was. Um, but obviously I want to re recap what happened in, in March of 2020. Um, we went through a we went through a situation where the pandemic forced a lot of businesses, including ONTV, to shut down. And um, my show, my History Now show, on, um, on, which was actually about a little bit of on COVID-19, it was um, kind of the last show. I also talked about lighthouses on that show as well. Um, on COVID-19, I will eventually redo the show, that show, as there was more information about about the virus and what it, it does and what it doesn't do. Um, so I'll eventually in time redo that show. Um, I remember seeing I remember seeing our, um, our the higher ups were talking about shutting down and um, following the, the the township's order to you know with the businesses and then making their own decision to shut down and um, pretty much going to COVID-19 pandemic coverage, it was, um, I remember sitting there and I was like, um, wow, is this really, really happening? Um, at that point, um, March 11, March the 13th was very, March the 13th was very much, a, March 12th, March 13th, that whole time frame was very much a surreal day in which, um, it basically life changed. Um, prior to that, I um, I was doing my job. I was I'm working as a hall as a lunch monitor at Scripps. I still do to this day. Um, we were had we were very much involved with boys basketball districts at that time. Girls basketball had finished for Lake Orion. Boys basketball was still going on and. Um, Lake Orion at that time was in was about to compete in the district final against Clarkston at Clarkston. Um, there had been a lot of concern that whole week about the rising cases of COVID-19. COVID was just detected in Michigan. And um, it it was very much it felt like a tale of two days because then March the 12th, March the 12th, it felt like, you know, that last day, so I ended up taking my coffee cup, hinting that schools were going to be shut down for the year, because I was hearing the talk that schools were going to be shut down for the year, so I kind of prepared myself as if the schools were going to be shut down for the year, and then um, little I hold, the next day is a half day, and then no, then they went into online learning for the rest of the year. Um, then it then I also went into a situation where there was no more basketball. They decided to cancel the MHSA season after the basketball districts, and it felt surreal because that whole because you were just you know you're you're kind of in that moment where you know you're kind of in basketball mode. You're kind of you know prepare you know you're kind of preparing as if you know. Um, you know, you know, you're you're kind of in that sports mood, but then when when it it, it just it, it was just like a complete standstill. It was like, whoa, what happened? And um, 
obviously not having those sports, it really took its toll, especially on my brother, but I'll get to him in a little while. Um, obviously, it, it was a complete shock, complete change. Um, obviously, the, um, the three situations, the pandemic, the election, um, and then the, the, ri the race protests, the race, the riots, the protests, um, it really caused me to really reflect what I was teaching, what I was educating about history now. Um, I just want to reintroduce the concept of history now. What it, the intent of history now is to educate and to teach from what I was viewed, what I, what I was taught, what I learned, researched, studied. Um, my intent is to let viewers come up with their own conclusions when it comes to historical events, historical accuracies. Um, obviously, it, it's up to the viewer to decide what is considered truth, what is not considered truth. Um, but I'm, I intend to educate and to teach perspective from my view. So, and obviously those three things, along with being, along with being in throughout that whole COVID situation, um, it caused me to reflect on a lot of things. It really reflected on, okay, on my, on my History Now subjects as well, because I, I like to focus, I'm very much a guy that focuses on, um, uh, like so many, I have, I have topic interests that I like as well. Um, I'm very much a, a World War II geek. I'm very much a French Revolution, Napoleonic Wars type of geek. I tend to, you know, I'm a history nerd. So a lot. Of, so obviously, when you when you see everything that's going on, when you whether in the media, whether it's on the, um, or if it's you're walking around in life, um, I've been somebody that is not always a front and center guy. I'm very much somebody that likes to watch everything that's going on from behind the scenes or from a distance. Um, I've got friends on both sides that are very much um, on both sides of the aisle. And um, one of the big things that I've tended to do really, really well was keep, was keep my friends on both sides of the aisle. So. I ended up, so throughout the whole thing, I just, I watched from a distance. I reflected on what, um, on how history now is, and then came up with my conclusion that, you know, I'm going to let viewers come up with their own conclusions. I'm going to teach and I'm going to educate what I was taught, what I learned, and hopefully teach the viewers everything about about my perspective of history, about about what my what I learned in school, what I learned in college, what I learned in high school, what I learned in elementary school and middle school. Um, obviously, people are going to have different viewpoints. People are going to disagree. Um, I understand that. I get that. Um, I just you know and you know I bring in guests who I'll bring in guests who whether or not you want to agree or disagree it's it's up to you but I mean feel free to express your viewpoints and um, you know and you know I think it's important to understand that you know we can always agree or disagree but you should never have a situation where it it causes someone to hate or dislike because of of a stance of something you know, it, it, it should never ever be a situation to where, you know, you hate someone because they don't disagree, they don't agree with your stance or something like that, you know. It should never be that way. You should always be in, open to interpretation, open to people's viewpoints, people's opinions. And, um, you know, so, and we've seen a lot of where, um, We've seen a lot where there's just hasn't been a the lack of compromise. People have taken solid stances on certain issues, um, whether it would be whether they whether it was agreeable or not, or disagreeable or not. It's just that we've seen the lack of compromise, and that's something that you know. It's just been it's been it's been challenging. But as I said, viewers can come up with their own conclusions, not just about about 
my show history now, but everything that's going on in life. So I just wanted to recap what's been going on in March of 2020. Um, obviously, the, obviously, you know, talk about what's been going on in March, what's been going on, and, um, you know, and then I want to then reintroduce what History Now is, reintroduce what the show is, um, and let viewers know that, hey, the show's intended to educate and teach, um, and then to encourage viewers to come up with their own conclusions, and um, hopefully I can help out with that. When I return to History Now, I want to talk about some of the future projects. Um, also a big question in regards to Between Terminas here on History Now, here on ONTV. ONTV invites filmmakers of all ages to take part in the annual Wildwood Film Festival. Kickoff is on Thursday, October 7th at 6 p.m. Filmmakers have five days to plan, shoot, and edit a short film that will be critiqued by a panel of judges and shown on the big screen at the Oxford 7 Theater on October 13th. Cost is $50 per team, which goes toward prize money and a portion of which will benefit Lake Orion High School's SOS program. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Termina, and um, I just wanted to continue talking about what I've been doing since March 2020 when um, we had the, we're in the height of the COVID-19 pandemic. We're still in the pandemic as we speak. Um, I want to talk about, I got a lot of questions from viewers in the community, viewers outside of the community. One of the big ones that I would get um, is when Between Terminas would return. Um, one of the things with Between Terminas was um, we, we were pretty much three guys and when ONTV shut down, it, um, B BT was, is pretty much a studio show. It could be a podcast show at times, but it's pretty much of three guys talking sports, talking life, um, you know, three or two brothers and one really good friend. Um, so we wanted to address, I wanted to address BT a little bit. Um, we're pretty much, we're looking at a fall return to Between Terminas. Um, we've all been involved in different projects. Um, I want to start with with um, Sam, my brother, personally. He's been involved with working with OA now. He's been, um, which is his podcast here on ONTV. He's been also involved with working with sports. Um, obviously, speaking of Sam, um, Sammy had when the COVID-19 pandemic began and they took away and they took away the sports, Sam very much struggled with that because sports is very much something that Sammy looks forward to. He loves, he embraces. So it was a very difficult adjustment for Sam, but thankfully that Sam was able to, um, he was able to overcome it a little bit. Um, but obviously having the no sports, it was very, very difficult on him. So I think having sports back, um, having, doing those other, having those sports back and having the, you know, it really, really helped him through this, through this situation. And, um, obviously being able to have the podcast again, um, very much go, it, it very much has helped him through going through the pandemic. Um, now with Ian, Ian Weatherspoon, um, a lot of good things happened with Ian. Uh, Ian is working. He, he got married. He's going to be a father. Congratulations, Ian. Um, it's gonna, it, he's been doing really, really well. Um, Ian's been living in, um, in rural Oak and, um, you know, there are times that he, it's been challenging for him to come on, come to Lake Orion, obviously because Lake Orion Rural Oak, it's you know it's a 20, 25 minute, 30 minute drive. It's um, 
So it's so we've been also working on different projects. Also, ONTV had had been closed for a time, and then it went to um, to where you could only have two people in the studio. Uh, we're we're three people in the we're three people, and um, so one option was one option and it still is is to maybe have Ian come in on Zoom. We've seen the popularity of the rise. I won't say popularity, but the rise of um, of like Microsoft Teams and Zoom and all of those um, using the screen more so to you know, to communicate, to interact. So that's certainly been one idea. Um, but, you know, Sam and Ian and I have been contemplating a couple of ideas that we've been looking at. We've been looking at potentially doing shows outdoors. We've been looking at potentially doing shows at three separate places. I mean, just trying to make, make it more fun, more entertaining, more different for the viewer. And um, so I'm just, we're right now, we're looking at a a fall return for Between Terminas. We're looking at a, um, a lot of people have asked is, was this the end of Between Terminas? And um, at first it was very difficult to say that if it, if it was, but at the end of the day, we're pretty much certain that it, it's not gonna be the end. And um, we wanted to, you know, we gave it a little bit of a hiatus and um, we haven't done a show in a while, so. We're eventually going to do it sooner or later, but we're definitely looking at a fall return. Now, as for me, what I've been doing is, obviously, I went through um, some major changes as well. Um, I went through adjusting to a life without sports. Um, unlike Sammy, um, I do have a second. I do have a second um, option, which which is ultimately writing. Um, so I've been writing a lot of works, a lot of short stories. I've been really busy with, um, you know, those have been taking a lot of my time. As some of you guys know, I, I do write. Um, I do like to write short stories. I do like to, it's, it really keeps the mind fresh when you are, when you are so, you know, when nothing is really going on, it keeps it fresh. So when we went through the restrictions of no, of you weren't able to travel to your to your home, or you weren't able to um, go out and travel and do anything. Um, you were just the basic like necessities, like going to the grocery store, and all. It it um it was very much a struggle. But thankfully, with um writing, whether it was in a notebook, whether it was um on the computer, whether if it was you know those types of things. Um, writing was able to keep my mind fresh and it really really helped me through that whole um it's really been helping me through the whole pandemic ordeal um as i made mention life without sports it was very difficult especially for sam um having those you know not being able to go into work not being able to it really felt at first that everything was being taken away from you and um it really felt, and obviously this subject, like a lot of others, has been very controversial. Um, it's been, it's, it's like, you know, there's a lot of people that feel like, hey, you know, s s things need to be taken away such and such. You know, we weren't allowed to go to restaurants. You weren't allowed to go to work in new businesses. You weren't allowed, you had to do everything online. Um, you had online learning in schools. You had... Um, it was just, it was a very, it was a very controversial time, be, it still is, because you have a lot of people that are firmly, you know, that have very firm stances and um, don't want their views or perspectives to be questioned or challenged. So it was very much a, a very much a shell shock when everything was taken away during the during the pandemic, uh, slowly but surely, everything did start to come back, which was which was great. Um, everything did start to slowly but surely come back to where there seems it it very including including sports. And it took a while. I mean, 
very much was monitoring the situations between the MHSA, the Michigan High School Athletic Association, and the MDHHS, which is the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services, really much monitoring everything. Uh, we had to watch high school sports become a political issue, which, to be honest with you, high school sports should never be a political issue. Uh, we had to watch a lot of other things that we take for granted, we take for everyday life, become issues, become political issues, which, you know, to be honest with you, they really should not be. But obviously the whole situation with mental health and, um, you know, the, the physical health, mental health, um, it really did take a toll. And um, one thing that I, I would really do during that time was I would check up on people, make sure that people are doing, our, whether it was family or close friends or friends that I have not talked to in a while. I took a lot of time to reconnect with old friends that I have not seen in a long, long time, check up on them, seeing how they're doing. And um, it was very much, you know, I was able to find some things to make work for myself during that time. And I also went into other um, advocate. I also went into advocating for, um, particularly with um, Lake Orion Athletics, something that I've been doing for some time, which is um, which is particularly focusing more on um, things that are going on in the Oakland Activities Association, whether it be focusing on um, expansion in the league or even potentially looking at Lake Orion going to, you know doing something else with Oxford or Clarkston or something like that. And um, so I, I've been advocating that and I kind of further extended my stance on that. Um, so I've been able to keep myself pretty busy during this time, during this, the time between March 2020 and, and here. I also went up to my summer home in um, Caseville a lot. Um, a lot of times I would spend Time, I would spend it up, up for a week in my summer home. Um, it gave me a different outlook in terms of what do I want my future to be like? What do I want? Do I want to live up here for the, live up at my summer home for the rest of my life? And um, one thing that, why I bring that up is because it really, really, it gave me a different outlook. And um, I was fortunate enough to be able to travel up to my summer home in March, where um, I would see, you know, up there, hardly any of the businesses were open. It was just very much peaceful. It was very much a, um, it was a very much a life-changing experience for myself being up there in the winter compared to normally being up there in the summer. Um, obviously, went through a lot, got a lot of support during that time. Um, a lot of support from my family, from my friends, um, from my, from my, um, from just community members in general. I think that um, it, I was able to go through a lot of just getting a lot of support, um, emotionally, physically. Um, it's been quite the experience. There were times where, um, there were times where, you know, sports would return high school sports would return, though it returned in pieces, I would say. Um, like, so instead of, we would have six week windows of, of sports. So like particularly of, um, of football, of um, volleyball, of, you know, and then the winter it was boys basketball, wrestling, you had to go, and then track in the spring, baseball and lacrosse. I mean, you just had to go through the rules of, what the MDHHS was in terms of the testing and um, you know it was truly really really different and then also having to wear masks in places it was very much an adjustment period right there. Um, I was able to return to work um, I was also was very, very much able to return to to scripts and work um, it was there was a time for a week and a half, about a week and a day there were in November. We had, um, we, we were able to be in person for a week and a day. Um, and then we went back into virtual for all of December, returned in January, um, for like, for hybrid learning. 
and then we went back into full in-person learning and um, it was quite a wacky crazy um, experience and um, having to adjust to different roles different jobs but it that experience let me go into different roles roles that I was somewhat familiar with um, and then it would then go back to more of a full-time um, full-time job in the inside the lunchroom so but it was it was an experience so and then also being coming back to on TV is part of the um, it's kind of like the coming back in a way coming back home and um, so coming back to going back to the job sports are back going back to your old middle school and working again just you know life seems to slowly but surely start coming back to normal um, when I return I want to talk about when I return I want to talk about what the future holds and um, some awards that we that me and the brother got here on history now here on ONTV Have you ever thought of producing your own podcast? ONTV offers the facilities, equipment, and training to help you get your own podcast off the ground. Learn how to record your show and get it out to the world. Cost is $25 per person, which gives you access to ONTV's podcast room and equipment. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today. Welcome back to History Now here on ONTV. I'm your host, Anthony Terramina. Um, I wanted to continue talking about some things that happened in, um, in April and May of, of 2021. And I also want to address the future of, of History Now and between Terramina's and um, going from there. Um, I was actually, we had a, Keith Dunlap wrote a wonderful article about my brother and I for Autism Awareness Month or Autism Acceptance Month, depending on what people celebrate. Um, it was a wonderful article about my brother and I about how we were able to overcome life with autism during the pandemic, which it was very, very challenging, but we were able to, we were able to overcome. And, um, recently in May of 2021, the Orient Township community rewarded, gave Sam and I the Orient Township Citizen of the Month Award, which, um, which honestly, that was very much unexpected, but we, and so to have our names on the, in the township offices forever with the likes of, um, of other Orion greats, that, that says a lot, that means a lot to both my brother and I, and it was quite an honor, quite a, it was also very unexpected as well. So we adjusted to you know, just everything that you go through, it was to get that, it's, it's, it was great. Um, I want to talk about the future of what History Now and Between Terraminas will be. Obviously, we're still here, still going to be doing shows, still going to be around, we're still going to be working in the community, still around the community, still very much involved in the schools. Um, we're just very much busy with our lives. Um, you know, as I made mention, we were working on different projects. Both Sam, myself, and um, Ian were all working on different projects. Um, basically, we've adjusted. It, it, you take life day by day. And, um, you know, I think from I me, mean, you look forward to certain things, but then there are things you just... So pretty much my life changed in terms of instead of looking at, um, like, long-term... I just look at things day by day. And um, so, I mean, it's it's important to let the community know, let the viewers know, hey, this is what I've been doing since ONTV shut down, what History Now has been going through. I mean, the whole, with everything going on in 2020. Um, and then just pretty much letting viewers come up with your own conclusions when it comes to history, when it comes to History Now. As I said, my show, History Now, is intended to educate and teach, um, just letting everyone know to come up with their own conclusions um, 
whether you agree with me or not, it it's up to you. Um, and just going from there. Um, so I mean, the future of history now between Terramina's history of, you know, being involved on TV, it's still there. It's still going to be. We're still going to be there. We just have been really, really busy. So in terms of, you know. I mean, you're probably not going to get the weekly shows of Between Terminas like you used to. But, I mean, it's still going to be there. And I think that's important for viewers to know. All right, guys, that will do it for this episode of History Now. Um, I'll see you soon. You guys take care. And um, ta-ta for now.